Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. I hear the train a coming. It's rolling around a bend. So, next material going over top of this, our overwing, so to speak, is Icelandic sheep. Icelandic sheep is probably the single most effective natural material for streamer flies. This stuff is great. It is soft, it is supple, it moves like crazy in the water. And the other great thing about it is it's got lots of long fibers on it. <clears throat> and um, that's important because, especially for me, I tie a lot of pike flies, I want a long fly. And you can see you get a long fiber with this stuff which is uncommon with some natural materials. Some natural materials, it's hard to find long fibers. But with this Icelandic sheep, you get a ton of long fibers. The other thing I like about it is that for those of you that have you know, tied a few streamer patterns in your life or a few bait fish patterns and you've tied with synthetics, you'll understand that it takes some practice to build that sort of natural bait fish taper with a synthetic material because most synthetics are made you just get two you just get solid lengths of material like EP fibers or something like that you get solid lengths of material it's cut flat at both ends and you have to you have to manufacture a taper somehow you either do that by manipulating the fibers before you tie them down to make it tapered or or you tie the stuff down in layers smaller amounts and tie it tie it down in layers to create that tapered profile but when you use a natural material like Icelandic sheep for example you get a natural taper built right in. There's your natural bait fish taper. All you gotta do is cut that off and you have it now. And you can just tie that right on top of your hook and you don't have to worry about manufacturing a taper. When you're done, your fly will be tapered and it will look like a bait fish. So, this is what we're gonna put on next. It's gray, that's gonna be our overwing. And we're gonna put on, take a little, tie that off or cut that off there and tie in this Icelandic sheep on top of the fly here. And so there is some under fur in this stuff, so you, you kind of want to pick that out a bit with your hands. It's not too much, not too bad, but, but there definitely is a bit. And there you go. And you can see what I mean by that natural taper. Like I haven't done anything with these fibers, manipulated them in any way. I've just stroked them, and you automatically have your, excuse me, you automatically have your natural taper. So put that on top. You want that to be just slightly longer than your than your bucktail, like that. And tie that in, basically the same spot you tied in your bucktail. Crank her down nice and tight. And once again, just bind down, bind down all this Icelandic sheet. Don't worry about cutting it, your tag ends off, trimming them. Just bind it down. Cover it with your thread. Okay, so there we go. We got our flash in there, we got our bucktail, and we got our Icelandic sheep, and you can see you got that nice taper. It looks great. So now we go up to our body. <clears throat> Normally, this fly would have been tied with a dubbing brush or a dubbing loop, pardon me. You would have had to have made a dubbing loop up, put your material in the dubbing loop, and then tied the fly. But now, People have started, companies have started making these dubbing brushes. And it's usually a piece of wire or thread, strong thread, and then it's twisted, and then they twist the material in it. It's similar to a, a dubbing loop, basically, but it stays together better. You can buy it like this. This one is made by Enrico Puglisi. This is EP Sparkle Dubbing Brush. But there are other companies in the market. This is also another dubbing brush I really like, another company that I really like um, that makes them. And... You can get them in all sorts of different colors. They're all pre-made for you. It, it makes it makes your life so much easier, and it makes it so much faster. Unless you have, you know, invented your own blends of dubbing and and have your own blends of dubbing that you really like and trust, there is no reason not to use these things. Um, they do cost a little more. I think it's about two dollars a piece for these things, but it might not be that expensive. Might only be about a buck a piece for them. I think maybe the pat. It's about four dollars or five dollars a package and you get three or four in a package so maybe just slightly over a dollar a piece but it's so it's so worth it that for me the cost is the cost is worth it so you tie that in bind it down 
Again, it's made with wire, so just bind that wire all the way down the hook shank and make sure it's covered right up so you don't have any little pieces of it sticking out that would drop anything. And then come right to about an eighth of an inch from the eye. Stop your thread. I'm just going to half hitch this just to get it out of the way. My thread out of the way. Okay, and start winding this in. And same as you do anything when you palmer it around the shank of your hook, I always recommend to stroke the fibers back. Some people don't, but I like to. I think it just creates a bit a fuller. I think it just creates a fuller body. Uh, when you don't do this, you end up binding some of the fibers underneath your next wrap, and it takes away from the fullness of the body. I mean, I have a true rotary vise, and I could just spin this on, but and it would be a, way faster, but. I just think it looks, it just seems to look a little fuller when you stroke, <clears throat> when you stroke the fibers back with every turn and, and don't bind them down and don't bind them under your, your next wrap. Maybe it's just my imagination, I don't know, but this is just how I do it. It takes a little bit longer, but it's not bad. All right. Coming up to the point where we want to tie it off, about an eighth of an inch from the hook shank, or from the eye of the hook, pardon me, and we'll tie that off right there. A couple of nice tight wraps, a couple in front, just to finish that off. And you want to use an older scissors that you have lying around or even a pair of wire cutters or something because this is this is bound together with wire so it is a wire brush and you don't want to wreck <clears throat> your good scissors by putting nicks in them so I just bend that wire back like that hold it back there with my hand and then just bring my thread up and I'll tie right over top of that wire just to make sure that's bound down completely and not sticking up and then you want to build up a bit of a thread head here. Not to be too big, but just a bit of one. And then we'll tie her off. Whip tie, whip finish the fly. And that is basically the end of the tying of the Bartow minnow. Just like that. Cut off the thread. All right. Now, that is the, that is the basic fly basic tying portion of the fly. Get some of those fibers off from around the hook guy. Perfect. Now, <clears throat> we want to put eyes on the fly. Um, I don't really trust any streamer pattern that doesn't have eyes on it. I, I don't know if it makes a difference. Some people seem to think it makes no difference whatsoever. Other people swear it does. For myself, you know, eyes are cheap and uh, I'm not really going to get involved in whether or not it does or doesn't or waste my time experimenting on whether it does or it doesn't. I just put the eyes on. Um, they're inexpensive and they're easy to get. The step doesn't take too long and I just have more confidence myself fishing a fly that's got eyes on the hook. So we stick them right on that, that thread head we've built up there. These, these flies I use are like a, just a holographic prismatic fly. You can get them in all sorts of different color combinations. Um, the one I'm putting on this fly is is got a, an orange, an orange backing with sort of a halo, or an orange halo around a black pupil. But uh, those are those are three different colors of of eyes that you can you can get. They're all made by the same company. Um, one's red and yellow got the orange halo with the back black pupil and you got more of the sort of, sort of natural looking eye. I like all of them. Um, I'm going to use the ones with the orange halo on this particular fly. But like I said, they're cheap. They are easy to find and they're easy to put on. It's not a hard thing to do. They had come with a little stick on the back. So they have a sticky back so they'll stick on the fly and hold in place until we can secure them permanently. You just again just stick them on right to the thread head push them on and then just check from the front make sure that you got them even and make sure that the gap 
on the top and the bottom in between is roughly the same. I hear the train are coming, it's rolling around a bend. And I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when I'm stuck in Folsom Prison.